Well, with me still is Chris Robert Shaw. We've done an item about energy, and uh, also I know you were keen to talk about the interview that took place here the other day. We, mm -hmm. we had this uh, head, head of the, uh, the BMA for the old man sort of thing, basically, giving us his views on, on Manx care. And uh, to say that it sounds worrying, and that's to him and to me as uh, you know, mm -hmm. being someone that might need the hospital, what, did he, what was your take on oh, what, was, what Manx cared up to it? And, how they're treating their doctors and, and that survey, which was interesting. Um, I think that would all be incidental to a, a much deeper issue. Mm. I, 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 think, I don't think it's just you and the doctors. I think, I, and as Rob Collis has said on the radio, I think yesterday or this morning, can't remember which, that we're all worried about the future of our health service. And I think that, that applies to everybody in one form or another, uh, we're, not a, we're not in a particularly good place. What I would say, in defence of Mike's care for a moment, is that don't think that what we're dealing with now is somehow new because of Mike's care. I mean, I, 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 I've been watching this problem with the cost of uh, health, um, as it were, unfold right the way through my time in politics. Every year, incessantly the cost of health uh, yeah. has been going up now it's it's starting to accelerate but it doesn't matter I, how much money you throw at it they want more well money. if that's it's just an endless bottomless pit isn't it uh, uh, yes and the problem there is how do we resolve it and I think this is a really big and important issue here um, I don't think just bringing it back into the political realm away from Manx Care will solve anything. It didn't solve it before and it ah. won't solve it now. So do you think the Manx Care was the right way to go there? Yes, I do. In ah. principle, yes, I yeah. do. In theory, but, it sounds right, yes, but definitely. It, but it's only part of a much, much bigger picture as to how we fund the health care that we need. And here I'm talking to you now as, a, 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 as an oldie, you know, and... Alf Cannon, uh, I think, mentioned it in his uh, government conference at uh, Comis recently about the, the increasing imbalance between older people and the working population and how much we older people should expect a, a, a smaller uh, employed pop younger population to pay for what we need. Now, I think, I think my generation would be much more inclined to be willing to look at different ways of funding elements of the healthcare in part if it had greater trust and confidence in government's own ability to uh, cut its cl its own cloth i mean if you, if you were if the vehicle of government was a uh, if the vehicle of government was a car and you were driving it every year we see all the departments produce these glossy brochures about how they're going to do everything in the next year or two. But you look in the, the rear view mirror, and what have we got? We've got an ever exploding government in terms of size, constantly exploding budgets, so its operational side has, has got ever more uh, expensive, along with a complete year after year after year, its inability to run capital projects. Now government, if it's going to find a way of funding healthcare, which it, we all must do, then government has got to find a way of rebuilding trust with the electorate. Does the electorate believe that the government is running cost effectively? Let's go back a whole load of years a decade or more, where we were using the word, word smaller, smarter government. You don't hear politicians now saying, you know, we've got to reduce the head count or we've got all. In fact, if you go back to the time I was in Council of Ministers with Alan Bell and we hit this £200 million brick VAT wall, the reaction at that stage was to, was to cut head count. Yeah. But we're back again now and beyond that. But... Wait a minute. And then <laughs> now the issue of how you control it is, oh, well, let's slam uh, a budget restraint on it. Now, headcount, budget restraint, these aren't the way forwards. The, the way to, bear with me, I'm really there, <laughs> you're very patient. The way to deal with this is to reform government itself. Okay. 
look. And to get I, confidence rebuilt, if confidence is rebuilt, then we have a chance to start thinking of new ways to rebalance how we're going to make our health service work. Look, look at that guy you were speaking to, the doctor, the, yeah. yesterday. Yeah. We're talking in an environment where his colleagues across have just got a 22% increase. Yeah. Okay, how are we going to factor that in here? How are we going to keep our doctors? It's impossible. I will. Exactly. That, that's what, what was so worrying. And we, I don't know any of this. We're going down those routes with him yesterday. That was just the way it was. Amazing. But um, back to, because I, mean, I have to say every time, you, you're aware that the civil service is running the Isle of Man. We, yes, we, we yeah. proved that. You talked about that way before I had my injunctions and all those slap letter things and all that thing when they oh, try to shut me down. Years right? I've been talking about You that. had, but we proved that they, then that, you know, they make decisions and not necessarily the council ministers. Massive thing. So the difference here is there's more civil servants all the time and Max Care, the headcount has gone up over the years. I mean, that three million pounds is just managers and things of like that to manage the health service, wasn't it? That's all that money oh, was going to do. I, they don't actually do the operations. These people are sitting above it trying to allocate the money mm -hmm. and it hasn't worked. And they say now it's not working, but has anyone gone? Has anyone been reprimanded? You tell me, because I think everyone's beyond reproach here. I think, I think the, the cost of healthcare is going to go up from now, mm -hmm. continue to go up. We're going to have to find different ways of funding that. But the electorates are not going to cooperate with this process until the government, the politicians, grow up and get their heads around the fact that they've got to start making government smaller and smarter. Look at, go back all those years to when we were saying, when I was in government, look, we need to introduce much more digital uh, engagement with, with the people of the Isle of Man in order to make government smaller and smarter. So we introduced that, mm. and yet there are still more people working in government, pr producing more regulations. Making it difficult for people to move here to take up business opportunities because the bureaucracy, as proven with one recent you know, I, I situation. Don't, I don't think that the politicians currently are, are in control of this at all. I, I still they're not, are they? No, no, I still maintain their egos are being stroked once they're ministers. They're being controlled by their, their CEOs, who shouldn't be CEOs at all. I've said this so often. They sh what we need to do is start to simplify government. And we need to make the, the departments of government, which have become complex conglomerates, that's what they are, yeah. with CEOs, and not, they're not CEOs, CEOs who are, as it were, trying to keep the lid on everything. You've got to simplify the departments and, and, and refocus them on operational service delivery. Yeah. And then find ways of making that process much more efficient and cost effective. Um, and as well, we then need to take the strategic and um, high level project work issues into the centre. Now, I don't know how many times people have heard me said that. We're still, we're still not doing it. But until we do that, we're not going to get control mm -hmm. of this. Because once you do that, you bring responsibility as a whole for these major projects to the Council of Ministers as a whole. And I've been there and I know that when things start to go wrong in a department, everybody else reverses back mm -hmm. and leaves go hang that minister who's in that particular issue. Yeah. So we are, our structure of government, and I'll keep saying this probably till the day I die, unless we manage to sort it out, that is our structure of government is currently misformed. It was a movement forward when we introduced the ministerial system, but then we never took it to its conclusion. We never learnt from the things that were going wrong. We just, we've just created these big conglomerates. I'm not saying Jersey and Guernsey are doing better than us, but but Guernsey, Guernsey reversed out of, of, of the ministerial system. But Jersey have moved towards a, a, a unified system of government. Jersey have capped their civil servants. They have got rid of a, a few. And I was talking to a journalist from Jersey yesterday. They got like rid of like four or five people from their comms department as well. So you know, right across the board in Jersey, they've got limitations on their salaries and how many they can employ. They, they're reducing. Someone well, down there is, is on the right side. Here... And, you know, while well, you've got the gatekeepers running the Isle of Man, it's not going to happen, is well, it? Well, let, let me say this to Treasury and to all members of Timwald. You are not going to do it just by headcount. We've tried that and it failed. It worked for a, a short period of time. You're not going to 
to do it by just capping budgets. Look, look what's happening to the health service now. Yeah. You have got to have the honesty of purpose to say, we have got to regain the trust of the people of the Isle of Man and make our organisation much more cost effective, much more productive. That will allow us then to uh, move more money towards the health service, which incidentally, because I support the concept of max care, does not mean I, I currently uh, support the current st managerial well, structure. Don't, don't you think the they need to go and, and new people come in? Because clearly they can't do the job. They, they, it's been proven. That well, your doctor, your doctor said that they need to be l led by a, a leader mm. who enjoys the respect um, of the consultant, certainly. They had that in Rosalind Ranson. Yes. And they got rid the of her. There. And they got rid of her in favour of some woman yeah. who had a, a um, PhD a, in piano, a, a, no, a degree, degree in, in music, 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 who caused mayhem, who did huge damage because <laughs> she she just tried to destroy Rosalind Ranson. She tried to destroy the anaesthetists, those four yeah. anaesthetists. Yeah. So we we're all, we're put ourselves completely on the back foot because of that. There needs to be such an honesty of purpose in government now. Well, following my, that interview and that, that, the, the results of that survey, mm -hmm. Manx Care produced a flurry of, of good messages the next few days. But I haven't had a reply to do an interview. I mean, from whom? From Manx Care. I don't. I mean, obviously they've done it on the radio. Uh, maybe they, they get a, a nicer ride. I don't know how it works. But I would have thought they would have wanted to put somebody up for an interview to balance it up, because. I, I don't need to ring them, they can just get in touch with me. That's how it works, and I will be happy well, to talk to them back today because I'm fascinated to know why it's just going along as it is. That, that, that consultant would not have spoken to you unless they were deeply worried. Yeah. Um, I support Rob's, Rob Collis's comment that people out there are really deeply worried. Absolutely. Well, they should be. Yeah. It is not going to happen, a resolution of this is not going to happen in isolation because the problem is going to carry on getting yeah. more and more difficult. Government has got to come to its senses now and grip itself. It's got to put the, incidentally, not only your point about, um, about the civil service running the show, not the politicians, there has to be something of a, res uh, and we can't deal with it here, perhaps on another uh, conversation. And I purposefully didn't raise this myself uh, during the time that the assisted dying issue was going through because it would be seen to be just associated with that. But there has to be also a serious way now, a really serious way, of not only government itself re-engendering trust within the electorate, but the electorate itself has got to gain confidence that it can have more influence in the way the Isle of Man's going because it's not only is government continuing to get bigger and more expensive and losing the trust and confidence of the electorate, but the electorate itself is feeling far more and more removed from the process because they, their views cannot be expressed through the election of individual MHKs. No. They can on a constituency basis. And I've come slowly and irrevocably now to the conclusion, and I've thought about it an awful lot, that we need to go and examine the, the Swiss system of referenda, there's three levels of referenda, and we have to find a way of incorporating referenda in, referenda in our system so that the politicians, the um, civil service, government as a whole is well aware that the people have a say, and, and for those sorry to say this, and those who say we're going to find a resolution to this through party politics, um, I would say the answer is no, because the size of our of Timwell does n simply does not lend itself mm. to party politics, and goodness me, look what's happening across with party politics, mm. where the electorate almost across the board have now, have now said, you know, um, a curse on all your houses, both the Conservatives and Labour Party. And there's deep frustration there. Party politics doesn't work. So we've got some major challenges. And, and that we're two years away from an election. Now's the, the time for those who are interested in seriously thinking about standing or are already in and want to reappraise their positions. Let's have this discussion. I'm happy to talk to anybody and give any encouragement and um, opinion if it's wanted at all. But where we are now is not a good place.
Well, <clears throat> we'll finish by saying, I've said so many times now, these interviews send out a worrying message, right? Not just yeah. to the old man, but people who are thinking of coming here. This is what I keep getting, cannot understand why Manx Care, for instance, wouldn't come in here and give a good defense of what they've done. Because what's ha happening, it's just, it's just hanging over. That interview hangs out there with no response. And why is there no response? Why can't Manx Care come back with somebody to talk to us here? For the, the wider public of the of the world, say the world, you know, but, um, you know, these things are now much more bigger than just dealing with the Isle of Man. But anyway, well, I mean, uh, the, the Minister of Health, the DHSC, should be talking to you. Well, so if he won't talk to me, as you know. He well, said he you, wouldn't talk to me. Well, there you go. He said he would not talk to There's me. There's your answer. So he doesn't consider himself accountable to reasonable. Four hundred something odd days since he last did interview me. Well, he doesn't. He doesn't consider himself accountable. That's that's very helpful, isn't it? It's, it, it just leaves me depressed. You know, we have these chats, and like that's well, the thing. We, is there any light? Let's just finish on that. Is there any light in the tunnel? Jersey, well, Jersey, and the doctor talked about. You know, there's a little bit of money. If you want to see a doctor in Jersey, you pay to go and see a doctor. So there's that sort of way of topping up the, uh, the money good, for the healthcare. Good point. The, the, but I don't think we should con touch this or consider this sort of issue. I think ultimately we'll need to, mm. and how we do it to protect middle and lower incomes. What what we can't do is, while there is this such, there's such a sense of dissatisfaction with the way government runs itself, how it, puts, it appears to put itself first, how it's removing itself from, from the electorate, until such time as it grasps that, it can't break through to how can we think differently to, to fund our, our health service. Right. But back to your point about how do people outside the Isle of Man see this, well all I would say is that I think our challenges are more recoverable, our difficulties are more resolvable than the, the There's ones great positives the Isle of Man, yes. Yeah, yeah the, I mean, the, the, than in the UK, I mean goodness me, yeah, what a mess exactly. at the moment. But you know, it just seems like we are treading water at the best. You know, the Manx Care every year is going to come up, they, they, they're, they're shortfalls, they need topping up and the, you know, as oh, I said, no. they cost three million quid or more the headcount's gone up. This is the people, the management, who are meant to sort out yeah, the but, whole but, issue. But, and it hasn't happened, has it? They said it hasn't happened. So wouldn't you just say, right, resign. Yeah. Let somebody else come in. Let, let but, a new but, team come in and try I better. Th I think the Rubicon's been co crossed, though, in, in recent days with, uh, you know, we're not going to replace vacancies. We're, we're not going to bring agency workers in. We're, we're closing the, the yeah. little unit in Ramsey and so on and so forth. I mean, w what they're doing is, is manifesting exactly what one shouldn't do, which is, OK, we ha this is the way the government works. We have a financial problem. Cap, either cap the staff or, yeah. or cap the budget. And then the organisations then push that down to frontline a reduction in de delivery of services, be it uh, health or, or any of the other departments. What really matters are frontline services, not this increasing conglomerate organisation with ever more mm. uh, sort of headcounts in, uh, in the management and, and civil service level. That has got to be dealt with. Have we got the people to do it? I don't know.